volume of a figure, we find the amount of space occupied by that object. Here we have a cylinder with a radius of 1 inch and a height of 4 inches. To find its volume, let's start with its base layer. Here we have one circle with a radius of 1 inch and a height of 1 inch. To find the area of it, we would do pi times radius squared, so 3.14 times 1 squared. 1 squared is 1, 3.14 times 1 gives us 3.14 square inches. So our first layer has an area of 3.14 square inches. That means we would then need four layers. Each one of these layers would also have an area of 3.14 square inches. To then find our total volume, we would need to take 3.14 square inches per layer and multiply it by four layers. So that would give us a total volume of 12 and 56 hundredths cubic inches. Volume is a three-dimensional measurement and we represent it to the third power and read it as cubic. Well, let's look now at what we did in the equation. First, we found the area of the base. Then, we multiplied it by the height of the cylinder. So volume equals area of the base times the height, or big B H. This is the same general equation we had for volume of a prism. This time though, big B is the area of a circle. Therefore, for a cylinder, we can specifically have volume equals pi times radius squared multiplied by our height. Let's use our equation to find the volume of the cylinder. We know that volume is going to be area of the base or pi times radius squared times height. Well, if we look at our cylinder, we can see that our radius is four centimeters. So that means we have 3.14 times four squared, and then we can see we have a height of 10, so times 10. Order of operations tells us we need to do our exponents first. Four squared comes out to be 16, so that means we have 3.14 times 16 times 10. 3.14 times 60 comes out to be 50, and 24 hundredths. Then to find the total volume, we need to multiply that by 10. 50 and 24 hundredths multiplied by 10 comes out to be 502 and 4 tenths. Since our cylinder is labeled in centimeters, then our volume also needs to be labeled in centimeters, and volume is labeled to the third power. So we have 502 and 4 tenths cubic centimeters. Over here in this cylinder, we can see it's laying on its side. That means height is still going to be the distance between its bases, even though here it looks more like it's parallel. We also notice that instead of giving us our radius, they gave us our diameter. So first thing we have to do is use our diameter in order to find our radius. Well, a radius is worth half the diameter. So diameter divided by 2. We need to do 6 divided by 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3, so that means our radius is 3 feet. So we can go ahead and substitute that into our equation. So we'll have 3.14 multiplied by 3 squared for our radius multiplied by 8 for our height. Now we can go ahead and solve that. 3 squared comes out to give me 9, so we have 3.14 times 9 times 8. 3.14 times 9 give me 28 and 26 hundredths, then we need to multiply that by 8. Multiplying that by 8 gives me 226 and 8 hundredths. This is labeled in feet, so this will also be labeled in feet to the third power. So our volume comes out to be 226 and 8 hundredths cubic feet.